Therapy roulette, consent event. Trauma disguised as comedy. Therapy roulette, consent event. If you don't have problems, then you're likely repressing shit and you should find a therapist who's not me. I'm here with Rocky Powell. She is a comedian, a podcaster. She's in New York, so I am incredibly jealous. Rocky, welcome to Therapy Roulette. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Of course. And uh, I want to definitely talk about your podcast. Um, yeah. We could do it in the beginning or we could do it later, but it's called Wild Nights with yeah. Rocky Powell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love the concept. It's like, tell me something crazy that happened to you to like tell a story. Yeah, so basically, um, I try to always have entertainers, comedians, people that you know are going to give a good story. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people when I book them is I don't care how wild your story is or how tame it is, just as long as it's wild to you and that you enjoy retelling it. Because there's nothing like, I, I don't want anybody coming and being like, oh my God, and then we got in this horrible car accident and four people died. Like, not that kind of wild, like an enjoyable wild story. Um, so yeah, that's what I tell people to do. And I started it basically because I, as you know, New York comedy is so much fun. And I really miss the like post improv show hangs and going mm -hmm. to see people stand up and everything. So in December of 2020, I, I was like, you know what, I think it's time to start this podcast. And I had wanted to do it for a while, but it was just mainly because I missed comedy. Oh, nice. So it's like a, a pandemic born podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Very cool. So is therapy roulette. It's like, you know, a long idea brewing in my head and COVID hit and I was like, I have no excuses anymore. I should just no, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like got me off my off my couch and bought a microphone and here we are. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I had a microphone luckily because I do voiceovers too. So I oh, was, nice. I already had that. And then I had the skills of uh, editing my voiceover audition. So I'm like, I can edit and I have a microphone. Let's do it. Now it's so easy for anybody to do a podcast. So it's great. Very cool. Do you yeah. do you let the guests like premeditate what story they want to tell? So yeah, I always try and tell them um, if they don't if they're like, oh, I'm thinking of one. I've been pretty trusting. There have been a few people who will tell me like, oh, I've got a couple. Um, but I don't ask them the story beforehand. The only thing I ask beforehand is for one word to sum up their story. Okay, and I call that the wild word. And so we kind of like banter a little bit in the beginning and then I segue into their story with the wild word. I never really know how I'm going to do that. I always just figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that That's all I know about the story ahead of time. That's good. So you don't have to get like a rehashing where you're a little too caught up. It's more fresh to you. Yeah. Yeah. I've had people ask me like, I have the story about this and I have the story about this. And then, I, then sometimes I choose, but the, as far as the details, I hear them in real time. Mm hmm. And what was the, so the inspiration was like a uh, after improv show hang, maybe catching up at a bar or just in the city. Do you have a, a wild night you like to give us a taste of like a recent one or an old <laughs> favorite? <laughs> um, well, actually, yeah, I, I can definitely give you a taste. It was the, the inspiration from starting it. I'm a party girl. I always have been, I mm -hmm. love to go out and have a good time. Um, I love to throw huge parties. That's like kind of, I have a reputation for throwing like really big parties, especially like really big birthday parties and stuff. So yeah. I'm always, I'm always down to party. You're so the a fun, fun friend. <laughs> yes, I, I like to think so. So the inspiration was kind of between missing being a little wild and missing comedians in general. So I mesh the two together. Um, and I guess, well, things, you know, obviously we took a big, back seat to partying because of covid but i went um out with one of my girlfriends who i'm extremely close with uh we went out on friday night and i would say things got pretty crazy we went out it started really tame but we're both kind of like can handle our wine so we had like <laughs> a glass of wine at her place and then she um just asked me to be in her wedding party so she got me like as the bridesmaid gift she got me one of these to go wine cups so we filled those on our walk to the restaurant and drank those and then i had two more glasses of wine at the restaurant and we're both like keeping up with each other yeah and we're like oh we're gonna go to another friend's party so we go home walk her dogs now at this point we're i think four glasses of wine deep and then we have another glass at her house 
We get an Uber to what I thought was going to be a party, but it wasn't. Um, it was just a smaller gathering. But I, I, when I was asked to come to this party, I was told like, this is going to be a party. Over, I'm having some people over and I just assumed it was a party. Mm-hmm. And so my friend and I go. And first of all, we think we're in front of his house. We're not. We're like down the street sitting on someone's stoop while they're screaming. There's a couple screaming at each other. And we're just like these two drunk girls on our fifth glass of wine, like on this random stoop in bed And so then finally <laughs> we realize, okay, we're not at the right house. We walk down, we get to his house. As we get to his house, he's shuffling. There's about five people over there. He's shuffling everybody out of the house because the next door neighbor, I guess they were partying next door, took an empty pineapple can and hurled it over the fence and hit one of my friends that was in the backyard in the head. So he's like, you guys got to go. I got to take care of this. Oh, no. And then, yeah. And then we went to um, my fr- my other friend who was on her way there. We went to her terrace and I think we drank till like 2.30 in the morning and we're just like loud and screaming. And there's a lot of brownout moments for me, but I just remember (laughs) being like, okay, New York City and fun are both back, baby. (laughs) Yeah, the the whole scene is like coming back to life. (laughs) Yes, 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 for sure. That's like a little, that's like the the little medical drama, like the pineapple can hit someone (laughs) why how what was the impetus behind that throw (laughs) but then it goes back to like we just resumed somewhere else yeah yeah i mean he the host of the get together he had to handle that but he kind of was like i'm so sorry guys but i gotta and i think he was trying to do it without getting the cops involved because Mm -hmm. it can you never know what's gonna happen with them there so i think he was trying to be careful of that and handle it on his own but it was just like to get somewhere and already be kind of browning out and be like oh he just got hit in the head with a (laughs) pineapple can like you gotta go so um that was my friday night (laughs) yeah that's pretty good i mean i first of all like am marveled by the fact you could drink multiple glasses of wine and continue (laughs) because i would get so (laughs) sleepy from like I think I'm just out of practice, you know? Right, 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 right. You got to build your tolerance back up. <laughs> I know. I've been out of New York for too long. I'm telling you, LA is, is like, LA is like, oh, the sun is down. We are done. <laughs> it's really? very, It's very different. Like, at least my day-to-day life, it's very much like we go to sleep, we wake up. We kind of are farmers in a way. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not really out doing comedy right now. So I'm sure it'd be different if I was like in the heart of the city. Yeah. Yeah, I've become more of a homebody. I'm living in Long Beach, so I'm like a little okay. on, on the outskirts. But that's still, it's probably really beautiful there in Long Beach. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's like uh, artsy and skater, hipster yeah. vibes. It's something wow. different. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool, though. Yeah, it's it's a taste of California. I probably won't stay forever, but for now. <laughs> do you it's... think that you're going to do comedy shows, or have you just gotten comfortable doing the Zoom stuff and it's easier? I've kind of just like stepped back from it. I did one Zoom show the whole pandemic and focused on this podcast. And now I'm trying to go back into writing and figure out what Mm. I want to write, how I want that to be filmed or portrayed, like what kind what kind of script am I writing? Um, And I want to do stand up again. I just kind of am rusty. So I'd have to dip my toes back in. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I'm afraid everything's changed and it's a whole new world. I'm sure it's like not that scary. I'm just it's think- hard. I'm overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, you probably just have to jump right back in and like get your toes wet. But I, I it can imagine it's hard. You know, I'm going to be doing my first improv show next Saturday mm-hmm. for the first time in over a year. That's not on Zoom. So I'm a little nervous, too. But it's the same thing. It's like, OK, eventually I have to jump. So why not just now? Yeah, I'm still doing those like literal baby steps of like I'm going to restaurants I'm talking to other people <laughs> like I'm doing like these like I'm becoming a person again things yeah and then, and then it'll be comedy next <laughs> yeah you're getting acclimated yeah um tell us about mental health are you in therapy do you do therapy what's your relationship to it so my relationship with therapy I am no longer in therapy um I was it's funny actually so I'll start from the beginning I I started going to therapy, I want to say it was um, summer of 20, maybe summer of 2019 or, or, you know, late spring of 2019. 
And I did it um, because I had just gotten out of a, well, not just, but it was like, I was like a year, year and a half out of a really long-term relationship and getting over the breakup. And, um, you know, I had my own apartment with him. We lived together for over eight years. And oh, then, eight years. Wow. Yeah. We were together for almost a decade. And so basically my entire twenties. And so when we broke up, I had to go live with roommates and I lived with, and I was in my, um, I just turned 30 and I was like living with roommates who were way younger than me. And it was making me feel super bad about myself, especially like my friends are all reaching those next chapters in their lives that I thought me and my ex were going to be hitting Mm -hmm. at the same time. And it just like was not the direction I saw my life going in. And, and it's, you know, it could have been a way worse situation. Now my apartment is incredible. I live with uh, my roommate, who's my friend and my little brother, and we have, the place is huge and it's very homey. But when you first move in, you're like, I don't know these girls. We're not the same vibe, even though they're super nice, you know, we don't have anything in common and it doesn't feel like home. Yeah. And also I was, you know, really consumed with like, are he and I going to get back together? What's the, you know, what is he doing? I was like consumed with his life and I wasn't focusing on myself. And so there was a period where I, I didn't drink for 90 days just to kind of clear my head. I made sure I meditated every single day. Like I was really, I was journaling. I was doing like a gratitude journal. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos. I was doing a lot of things that were the right thing to do, but at the end of the day, when something is consuming you, like the way my breakup was, I needed professional help. Um, and I couldn't, you know, your friends, I have great friends and they would literally listen to me every single day, but that's, you don't want to be that friend. You don't want to be the friend who everybody like, it's like, oh, Rocky's here. And all she's going to do is talk about her breakup. So I, um, <laughs> I went to psych and I didn't want to be that person because people, even if they love you, they do get, um, you know, a little resentful. Yeah. So I, you know, uh, speaking from experience, you could only take like a little bit of that. mm -hmm, (laughs) Otherwise mm -hmm. you're like, come on, it's been however long it's been like, let's keep going. Yeah. And you want to snap your friend out of it. Absolutely. And, or, you know, they're walking on eggshells around me because like, I'm probably going to cry at the drop of a hat, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I eventually went to psychology today, I think is the website. And I kind of just saw who could take my insurance or if there was anybody I could go to. And so I found someone who actually was a grad student. She was about to be a therapist, um, but she was a grad student. And And you could tell that from, you could tell from the profile. Well, yeah, like she wasn't quite a doctor yet, but this, her being my therapist was um, her internship. Okay. So I still paid, I, I think it was a paid internship because I paid her $50 for a 45 minute session every um, Sunday, but she uh, wasn't a doctor yet. Mm-hmm. And I went to her and she was younger than me. I think she was like in her early 20s, or not early, but maybe mid 20s, 25, 26. Mm-hmm. And so at first, like she was really pretty, which has nothing to do with anything, but like, <laughs> she was like re- really pretty and really young. Yeah. And so I was a little but, like, you're, maybe you're wary of that. <laughs> like, why yeah. is she so pretty? And you know, do I trust her? <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Like, yeah. that's so, but that's just, I mean, that's just my truth. Like I was like, oh my God, she's like so pretty and she's a young therapist and I'm older than her. And like, does she think I'm a fucking loser? Can I swear in here? Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I didn't even ask. Sorry but about it's, that. It's um, kind of like a weird hypnotist playing out where you're like do I trust her because she's beautiful or is she actually smart and good at her job I don't know (laughs) and she was she was so compassionate I remember I would tell her um there were things at first it was just about the breakup the breakup the breakup the breakup but then you know you're like oh wow I spent a whole therapy session not talking about my breakup and Mm -hmm. it was hard to because my ex he was still in my world it wasn't like, you know, we didn't break up and then he moved over here and I moved over here. We were like seeing each other. We had the exact same friend group and we were in the same comedy circle. So it was super difficult. Um, so I would tell her like some of the things I would do or about like men I would hook up with or whatever. And I remember there was one thing I told her and I was expecting like so much judgment. But then I said, 
Rocky, you're paying this woman to help <laughs> you like sort out your shit. You have to tell her the truth. And I told her and she was just so non-judgmental. She was so cool about it. Um, and then I just was like, oh, I can tell her anything. And then, you know, you start getting into family stuff, which I'm like, oh, I, my family's fine. We're all good. But it's like, no, you actually do need to talk about this childhood stuff. And you do need to talk about this thing that bothered you. And um, she really helped me get out of my shell. And by the last two or three months of working with her, it was very little about the breakup and more so just about like getting me mentally healthy and strong and um she told me in March it was like I think it was the week before we shut down for COVID she told me you know my internship is ending in two months and I might be working with this company still or I might or this practice I should say not company mm -hmm. um I might be working with this practice but I might get you know a job somewhere else so I just it's not over yet but I just want to keep that in mind with you um if you want to continue to work with me, it might be a different price. I won't have control over that. And she told me that like the week before COVID and then COVID hit and um, obviously, and I didn't go back and I didn't really feel, I mean, I, I didn't really feel like I wanted to go back because I felt like she'd given me so many tools, even though I think therapy is really important for everyone. Um, she'd given me so many tools that I felt like I, I was good for a, a while. It wasn't a yeah. necessity expense. Like you did, a, it sounds like you put in a good amount of time, like mm -hmm. getting over the shock of the breakup, reorganizing yeah. your life, and then also going like, oh, let me get like that intro to therapy. Let me break down my brain a little bit and see what's right. going on. Yeah, that's basically what happened. So um, I can't recommend therapy enough to people, especially anybody who's like struggling with a specific mm -hmm. life event. Yeah, when you, feel, when you feel stuck, I feel like that's mm -hmm. when you should go on psychology today. <laughs> yeah, I felt stuck. That was yeah. a perfect way to put it. I felt stuck. That's awesome. You stuck with it long enough to like reap the benefits and prepare you for the pandemic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I was able to kind of just like chill throughout the pandemic. We, you know, we had a lot of space. We weren't on top of each other, but we like this, my brother and my roommate, like we liked the same shows. We, you know, would eat meals together. Like we, we really got through this together, but yeah, I don't know um, how I would have done that without therapy. Is there anything about the therapist that was like really awesome or really annoying? Was she like, did she have any quirks or tics? Um, nothing annoying about her. I, I know. Uh, yeah, there wasn't really anything annoying about her. I, mm -hmm. I wish I had some juice for you, but she was just, she was compassionate. She would, um, she wouldn't like go into details about her life, obviously, but she would do things like, you know, I, if I can, um, what was the, the term she used? It'd be like, if I can self share or self something, if I would give her, like tell her something about my life, she would compare it to something in her life to show me that like, you're not alone. This happens to other people in this way, blah, blah, blah. She okay. was really just like, she was an empathetic person um, who was really good at guiding me. So she was a good grad student. That's a hard find. Great. Yeah. Great grad student. Great That's grad cool. student. That's yeah. cool. I ask because so much of therapy is like a personality match. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, is this person all there? Like, are they together with their own life? Because that's a big question. And then right, right. you have to make sure they mesh with you and they understand you too. Yeah. It really worked out for you. It did. I got really lucky because I've heard similar things too. I've heard people have a therapist and they're like, it's not a good match. And then, you know, if you do a lot of time with a therapist then you got to catch up the new therapist and it's just um, a vicious cycle if you can't find a good match. So she was, she was a good match to the point where I think if I ever decide to go back to therapy, I might actively look for her yeah. And like meet her at this stage in my life or whatever stage I'm at when, if I need to go back or when I go back. I think holding on to people is important with that. Like you could reach out to her if she's available or she might have a referral. You know, uh -huh. she might have a trusted coworker. Yeah. That's better than starting from square one again. Yeah, totally. Totally. Very cool. And then so that sounds like a brutal breakup. Were you able to like get back out there and meet other people or did you really have to take a lot of time for yourself? Um, well, I would say 
like right at the beginning it was really hard because we lived together for 11 months after we broke up we like broke up a month or for 11 months yeah we like separated our lease was up june 1st and we separated in like july oh my god (laughs) new york city breakups it's like so rough i know i know and we were also like you know he was my best friend actually like we're pretty close friends now if that's healthy or not I would have to ask a therapist but (laughs) um but yeah like it's definitely been a long road to get to where we are now but yeah it was really hard I would say like the first month after we separated I like hit the tinder streets hard and like hooked up with a really hot guy who ended up being a con artist so that was okay crazy that's like another problem (laughs) yeah I was like I mean you con me all you want bro you're not getting any money like there's nothing to take (laughs) well you (laughs) recognize it that's good (laughs) well I actually didn't I was telling um my a couple of my girlfriends the stories and they were I was just so green about dating and then we ended up like looking online and figuring out that he was he was in fact a con artist but then I don't think um you know, I might have gone on like one other date while we were still living together, but then I really um, hit the ground running after <laughs> after I got my own place. So it was like, okay. After you got that, yeah, separation of, <laughs> yeah. we don't have to share living space anymore. Yeah, then I would say, and you know, there were a couple guys where you're like, oh, maybe this will be something, maybe it won't, but I haven't like found anybody that it's worked out with longer than like six weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's hard in New York because it's, it's kind of like uh, you're surrounded by too many people in general. Yeah. It's hard to like really go, go long term dating in New York City in my experience. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Or like, you know, I I sometimes think I was a, like a little too picky with guys. You know, if it was a guy I really liked, then he wasn't like emotionally mature to take the next step or, you know, I would get like ghosted or something. And it's like, bro, I'm going to have to see you. We know the same people like don't fucking ghost me. Yeah. <laughs> but then there would be like, I remember there was a guy I really liked and we had gone on a few dates and I and he had his shit together for the most part. But then I remembered after we had had sex and we were laying in the bed, he put his arm around me. And his arm was so tiny. (laughs) And I like, I was like, ah, man, I didn't feel safe. Like there was nothing (laughs) about him that made me feel safe. And I just, I was like, I got to end this. That's a bummer because I like all this other stuff. That's funny. Was it just, (laughs) just his arm was tiny or like he as a person was too small for you? He was like five nine, which is not too small for me at all. But I guess, I guess I learned in that moment that I need a little more bulk in the arm because I it was like my vagina shriveled up after I saw that I was like oh god I didn't even notice (laughs) which is terrible but and hopefully you told him something different you were like this just isn't working out you know your bird arms aren't doing it for me bro no (laughs) (laughs) I didn't say that I, I think he lost his job like two or three days he had a really good job and then he lost his job like two or three days after we had had sex for the first time because we didn't have sex on the first date yeah um but which I was like oh because I actually like really like this guy I'm not gonna sleep with him on the first date and um (laughs) not that you can't like someone that you sleep with on the first date but you know what I'm saying and so I was trying to play the long game yeah I was trying to make it something and play a little like have a little chase but after we had had sex I think like two or three days later he got laid off and then when I said to him, you know, like, what's your plan? Which is probably not a question I would ask post COVID, but pre COVID, I'm like, we can't both be vagabonds, bro. Like, I'm going to need you to have a 401k. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're looking and, for some security or like at least ambition. Absolutely. And he just seemed like he was like, yeah, wherever the wind takes me. And then I think we the texting just kind of fizzled out and we couldn't find a day. And then I got like, you know, I was like, well, I don't know the arms. I was like, maybe this is a good out. So it it didn't end up being a ghosting situation, but it kind of was a fizzle. Yeah. Which I prefer a fizzle. Like I think that's more natural. Let's just let it go. We're all, we're all busy. So we're all busy. You don't have to do a brutal, except for him because he was, (laughs) he was going with the wind. (laughs) (laughs) You don't have to do that. Like that awkward, impromptu breakup text where it's like no one asked for this why are you yeah. doing this to me <laughs> so yeah yeah a natural so fizzle good. way to go natural fizzle very nice um 
what what do you do when you're not doing podcasting or doing improv? Do you um, have do you have like an art that you pursue or you're into performing arts? Yeah, so I went to school for theater, so I have ambition. I had ambitions to be an actress, and I was auditioning a ton before the pandemic. Commercials, voiceovers. Um, you do voice work, right? Right, and I was writing. Um, my friend and I wrote a pilot together. But honestly, since I've started my podcast, I've just discovered this whole new world, like this whole new thing that I love. And um, I'm kind of like really doubling down on that. So I'm hoping to get a job in radio in the next couple months. I'm going to try to get a job as like a um, radio person. And then um, that's I, awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool. I, we'll see what happens. And I think I'm just going I mean I have this unique opportunity where I don't have to work right now so I put most of my effort into my show that's so cool because you start something like a podcast and you you really do open up another world where you're like wow yeah. people do this in all different kinds of ways it's kind of like a new medium for storytelling yeah so it does open up what radio is and is becoming mm -hmm. how we get the news like I didn't Absolutely. realize until I was in it too that uh, the whole that there is like there's this wild world of podcast there's so many for so many genres anything that you could possibly want to listen to there's mm -hmm. a podcast for it yeah and I like I've gotten my mom into podcasts like really? the older generation is getting into it yeah because I was just like I told her like how to open the app she listens to therapy roulette like she you know does stuff I never would expect my parents to do yeah 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 and then the younger kids are probably gonna listen to podcasts so it's just like the future of radio the future of journalism yeah it's really cool and then even so today my I released my 25th episode and I was like wow I have a catalog of work that yeah. if somebody that I could tell someone to go listen to or kind of like you know, I, with my show, I'll do sometimes in the opening, I'll tell a story from my life, or I write a topical poem or a jingle about, you know, something that just like comes to me, it usually comes to me, I'll be stoned and I'll be like, this will be a funny idea. <laughs> but some of them, like, I'm, I'm really proud of them. And I, I never, um, up until I wrote that pilot last year, I never really considered myself a writer. And now my podcast has shown me that I am and I can and I do and it's pretty cool yeah I love that let me know how your journey into radio goes because I've, I've been thinking like maybe down the road I'll pursue professional podcasting too because there's so yeah. many jobs there's so many opportunities I never like you know knew existed until recently same yeah um that's so cool and I was listening to the the one maybe two episodes ago of yours where you were doing like the fuck boy rundown oh yeah that was last <laughs> week yeah <laughs> Can I ask what was the inspiration behind that? Was it like you were listening to some straight white male content or was it just like people need to know? <laughs> I, okay, so this is actually pretty funny that you asked what the inspiration for that was. I had a different intro planned mm -hmm. um, and I do for the most part, I get the interview that I've done for the week edited beforehand, and then I write the intro and um, what's called the Rocky Rundown, which is like, a, what this is what happened to me this week. Yeah. I write that. <laughs> I like um, that little title for it. <laughs> oh, thank you. I write that on Saturday and Sunday, usually, uh, as close to the episodes getting released on Monday as possible. So last Sunday, I was at my parents' house in Connecticut. It was my mom's birthday. Mm -hmm. And my mom likes CBD. She's like recently got into CBD. So I went and got her, she, you know, she's been asking, she's like, oh, I'm out of my CBD. Could you like pick me up some more? And so I got her some, what I thought was like great CBD for her birthday. And um, <laughs> she told me when she took it, she was like, that is really strong. But I thought she, she wasn't acting like crazy, but she was definitely stoned. And I was like, oh, she's just like not used to smoking or she's not used to like taking edibles, but she handled herself really well. So I had no reason to believe that the CBD was as strong as it was. It was 25 mm -hmm. milligrams. And it had THC in it? I don't think so. I thought when I bought it, it was just CBD. And okay. so I'm, I'm at their house on Sunday and I'm like, oh, I'll just, it'll take me two hours to edit. I have my intro written. I'll write it out, record it, edit it. Boom. The episode will be good to go for Monday. 
but maybe I'll take a, a CBD because, you know, it's just supposed to relax. It's supposed to be a body high. It's supposed to relax you. It's not going to mess up my head. Yeah, because if it doesn't have THC, it's not supposed to at all affect like you're thinking. Girl, <laughs> I was messed <laughs> up. So 25 milligrams of it CBD was a, and I was messed up. It was some edible? Yeah, it was a little gummy and it took me hours to record my episode and then but 25 well, it's 25 milligrams in one edible yeah of, of cbd but that sounds like, like a lot though well i'm used to taking like 50 milligrams of thc and barely feeling anything i'm a very okay. big pothead and so <laughs> i i'm like used to i'm like oh i can handle 25 milligrams of cbd it about knocked me on my ass. And so I'm trying to edit the intro. I'm like struggling. And then I got really insecure about the story I told. And yeah. I just started like brainstorming stuff. And so that's where the fuck boys thing came. I like really wrote it out at probably 1230 in the morning, uh, Sunday night into Monday morning, wrote it out, recorded it and edited it as the uh, CBD was wearing off. But I had a whole different intro. That's funny because that's when you know you're high when the insecurities start coming out and you're like raging. It's like almost out of body insecurity. You're like, mm -hmm. what is this? Why am I doubting everything I've ever done? <laughs> it was the insecurity on this little gummy was raging inside me. I, I couldn't get a hold of it. And I can usually I don't whenever I'm working on my podcast, I don't like get high just because I get too distracted. And I just thought I was getting a nice body high and I drugged myself. <laughs> This was not the therapeutic edible you no. thought it was. <laughs> not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. That's funny. Yeah, I was wondering if the fuckboy list was like like inspired by something Joe Rogan said. I was like, where is this coming from? <laughs> <laughs> I did one time um, my – I think it was like episode five or something. I wrote a poem called um, Would I Bang an Alien? And that was inspired by a post <laughs> of Joe Rogan's actually. Because he's like, the aliens are coming in 180 days. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> Because I feel like my uh, boyfriend who I live with is always listening to Rogan. He's always like, you got to listen to this. Like, it's about aliens. It's about yeah. your mind. It's about like the science thing that I personally would never look into. But I'm like, OK, if it's that interesting, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I listen to Joe Rogan sometimes um, if I really like the guest, like if he has like a superstar guest on. I was actually before I uh, jumped on with you, I ha was listening to his episode with Whitney Cummings. Oh, yeah, that's a good that would be a good one for me to listen to because I'm always like, yeah. You know, I think Rogan's a good interviewer, but sometimes I'm like, I don't need to hear every single podcast he puts out because he's, no, no. he's always doing it. Yeah, he's been doing it pretty consistently, I think, since 2011. And he like puts out like two or three episodes a week. And it's crazy. Do you have like a favorite, favorite podcast that you listen to? Yeah, I like a lot of the dating ones. I love like oh, okay. Nicole Byer. I like uh, Guys We Fucked. Mm -hmm. Um Something about like relationships, I find that fascinating. And it's yeah. also like too much information about people's personal lives. Oh, so, it's so much. Those are my favorite ones. And then they're usually comedy, like uh, mixed with comedy too. Yeah. But That's Whitney cool. Cummings, I've been listening to hers too. And I like how vulnerable she gets. She's just like, here's everything about me. And then she like kind of gets that out of her guests too. Yeah, I've listened to every episode. I listened to that since it came out because I actually, um, I listened to Chris D'Elia's podcast oh, okay. before he was canceled. And it was like <laughs> the thing my brother and I would- Did he get canceled? I haven't followed up on it. He got canceled, but then he he was basically, he put out a, a apology on YouTube an uh, apology. a couple months ago. Right. He put yeah. out an apology <laughs> and then he um, started doing his podcast. Now he doesn't have sponsors, but he does Patreon. I don't listen to it anymore. Um just like you know I really enjoyed it beforehand there's something about it where it's like there's so much content out there even though I thought he was a really funny comedian and I'm sure his podcast is still funny there's something about like there's so many accusations even if I think it's funny like there's no reason for me to kind of like s support this when I there's so many other great podcasts so yeah I, um, good for you yeah I was just kind of like I I listened to his first couple episodes and then I'm like Am I doing this to like prove a point to cancel culture? Like, oh, I don't, I, I don't follow what the mob does. But then I'm like, eh, this guy kind of like tried to bang really young girls, and that's not really cool. And I don't really need to like, I don't need to like put him on blast. But maybe I don't need to listen either anymore. Yeah, something about it where I can't quite separate like the the shit you've done in real life from your art. It's like, yeah, it, it totally does intersect. And then 
it changes the way you look at someone. Yeah, you know, and so even that apology, you, you kind of knew that he knew the things he was doing were problematic. So I think, you know, I don't think his whole career should be over. He should, there, there should, you know, he should make his living doing whatever, but I don't need to be one of the people that's like, you know, he's not Bill Cosby, but yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, but it's still. But you don't need still. to be like uh, writing fan mail or like buying all of his tickets. You could exactly. just let him do his thing. You can go do your thing over there, but I don't need to like make that part of my stratosphere. Yeah, that's fair. So I, yeah. I like that, that you're, you know, cognizant of what content you're supporting. You're a fan of podcasts that probably yeah. bodes well for your own podcast because you're listening to like all the other content going on. Yeah, and I try to listen to – I listen to a ton of indie podcasts during the week. That's awesome. The, are you on the – are you on Twitter? I almost said are you on the Twitter, but – I'm I, on the Twitter, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'll have to follow you after this if I – if I might already be following you, but I – um, there's so many indie podcasts on Twitter, and there's mm-hmm. it's such a supportive community. Yeah, I try to do that too, where – I took a podcast class uh, in the winter uh-huh. and every, everyone was either like about to start a podcast or was pretty new to it. And I want to mm-hmm. just like support all those people. I yeah. want to like rise up people who are on my level because yeah. it's the hardest in the beginning. You have to like really oh, yeah. support people. <laughs> you have to really support people because uh, people will, you know, fall off their episodes or, mm-hmm. you know, they think hard. no one's listening. Like, Absolutely. if you just say, like, one nice thing, I think it really makes my day. It probably mm-hmm. helps people way more than you think. Yeah, so that's why I try to, like, even on my computer now, I have a ton of tabs open of indie podcasts on Twitter that I want to check out, and I just, mm-hmm. like, go down the line. But I try to listen to, like, I would say two or three indie podcasts a day, and I listen to them at two and a half speed, two to two and a half speed, so I can really pump through them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were yeah. saying that in the episode I was listening to, and I was like, I was like, that's a good idea, but also I can't do that. Like, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> For me, like, I, I, cause I do listen to podcasts sometimes at my job when I'm doing uh-huh. like accounting or when I'm doing like opening the mail, like stuff that you could kind of tune out a little bit. Of course. But I'm always multitasking. So I want to slow down the speed. Like, I want quick Sam podcasts sometimes to like yeah. process the information better. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm able to get it, but I it did work myself up to 2.5 speed. That was not easy. <laughs> yeah. It's a muscle you built. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll follow you on Twitter. What's your Twitter so we all can follow you? It's uh, at Wild Nights Pod. Okay. Yeah. I'll check you out. It is a great way to connect with other artists. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Do you find like your are you creativity creativity is your creativity fulfilled during the pandemic like through podcasting or have you found another way to be creative well it's funny I have felt really creatively fulfilled through since December um and before that I actually good thing to admit this on therapy roulette I was actually looking into going back to school and becoming a therapist Mm -hmm. um and I thought that I, you know, would be really good doing that. I love listening to people. I I love, you know, if, if I can help someone mentally. I actually wanted to go down the road of therapy where um, eventually my clients would be taking psilocybin, which is the, you know, the chemical compound in magic mushrooms. And it's like the happy, like, and there's a lot of studies showing that that can drastically change people's brains in a more positive way and make people more empathetic. And so mm-hmm. I... I spent probably like um, June to November, like getting my ducks in a row, talking to um, an online school about how I would get my degree and go back. And I got really excited about it. And then I realized like, I'm going to be in a ton of student loan debt. I'm not going to, I'm in, which I already am. I'm not going to be done with my degree for like three or four years. I'm going to be in front of a computer, like listening to lectures all day. Mm-hmm. And I just love comedy so much that I, I knew that even if I was doing something fulfilling, the part of me that needs to be fulfilled more by comedy needs that more. And I have to nourish that. And, um, then I started doing the podcast and it just, you know, it has me writing. It has me connecting to people. It, it I do feel, I wish that I had um, an intern to edit the episodes because if I had somebody editing the episodes, that wasn't me. I would probably try to be cranking out two a week. 
Yeah. It's hard when you're doing like all this production work by yourself. Everything. Yeah. Eventually, I feel like even if, even if you post something now on, you know, the internet, hey, I need an intern, probably people will respond. So yeah. And if you then, want it, it might yeah. come to you. <laughs> I could probably get that. At, but there is like, I don't know, I, I should probably get to that point. Because, you know, when I have to get a job again, that's going to be that's going to be really hard. So I um yeah, I feel like I have trust issues with like, I, I like it edited a certain way. So I'm like, you gotta just somebody will be able to get your style and pick up on it. So just, you know, relinquish a little bit of control, be able to mm -hmm. delegate. So we'll see but that would be um kind of cool. Yeah, it's out there. I, I've been talking about it since the beginning. Like, I need an editor. It would make my life so much easier. Yeah. Can't let go of control. I need to do everything myself, <laughs> no matter how little sleep I'm getting. Because, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I don't, it's like you're a child. You're like, no one can touch this. You're yeah. very protective. And then if you think about it, like, think about major radio shows or major podcasts. They have huge teams of people. giant teams some of them sound terrible <laughs> like yeah, you're like yeah. what this is a team of 10 people <laughs> like, so who okayed this yeah exactly so i um i don't want it to sound bad yeah exactly or be bad or just like not be solely you but i'm like eventually if this takes off which is what i really hope happens i am going to have to relinquish some control and make it a team effort but we'll yeah. see yeah but speaking from my accounting knowledge like you want to make it an asset. You don't want to make it a liability. So you don't want to right. be like pumping money into something you can't quite afford yet. You want to keep exactly. it close to you as long as you can. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's so cool. I, I've also been like, I think we're around the same age. I'm 30 and I've been totally like reflecting on my life too hard in the yeah. past year where I'm like, should I be in school? Should I be pursuing this degree? You know, what am I doing with my life? Because right. I feel like I'm never going to have this time to reflect quite the way we have in the pandemic and I yeah. want to go to school but I also don't really know and it's it's hard to like figure out where should I be putting my time I've just been journaling a ton and trying to make the podcast work because I don't want to give up on it I don't want to like quit before it sees its fruition so yeah for no, me it's like shouldn't. podcasting it's comedy it's writing grad school like I'll toy with it as the days go on i'm i'm not sure either i've been trying to and i don't want to discourage you from going to grad school because you have to do like what's best for you but there's just so i think after the year that we all just had like mm -hmm. creativity can and art can bring so much good into the world that it's like you know if you're doing stand up and you came out to la to pursue it then just dive in like how quickly you'll be enveloped in that community because everybody I, I also heard LA is very much like oh nobody knows who's who or who is like <laughs> one second from making it so everybody's like very schmoozy it's true with each other. like I think it's a lot easier than New York out here just because New York is hard like that city yeah. grinds you down no one cares about you LA yeah. everyone's like kissing your ass all the time everyone's nice because they don't know how not to be nice like it's very different <laughs> yeah that's what everyone says so i'm saying like if you made the move out there and you already have a job that can like pay the bills and you've got this really cool podcast like just dive in the water's fine like they probably need your stand up so just go for it yeah i don't know what you've been seeing about comedy the comedy scene lately but like we need more women back in there it's like yeah it's back to being all dudes like we need yeah. the variety so i think you're right yeah there's i i have seen like i follow a ton of LA comedians mm -hmm. and it seems like they're all like crossing over on each other's shows and I see way I do see it in New York but um and maybe I'm just not paying as much attention but um I feel like there's more shows happening in LA than I than there are in New York and I'm like I want to go see stand-up shows and support stand-up shows so I'm trying to like keep my ear to the street with who's performing where and doing what same I have to just like tell myself to stop being so tired, like go do the things that I love. Yeah. Do you have any friends out there who are also stand up that you could do like buddy, like go do buddy shows with? I do. I feel like everyone's kind of everyone I know is kind of half assing it now, half like right. I am where they're like, what am I doing? Am I a comedian? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think because I know a lot of women, maybe we're all just doubting ourselves and we 
should collect and go out there together because yeah power in numbers power in numbers like you can't that's one thing i've learned over these past couple years it's like you don't want to be the lone wolf like stick with your tribe of people and like rise together because that's where it's at yeah like even whitney cummings she on the surface she seems like a lone wolf but her podcast is all about connecting with people Mm -hmm. like she's Mm -hmm. trying to make friends as a 38 year old like huge success yeah she's she's trying to reconnect with people yeah and she she was able to do it there are so many comedians from whitney cummings life that have i've been they've been put on my radar because i um because she brought them up you know what mm-hmm. i mean I, I would i don't think i would have known who a- annie lederman is that her friend yeah she's so funny i wouldn't have known who she was um i knew who little esther was because i used little to watch esther <laughs> so cool yeah I used to watch that show um esther pravitsky yes her stand-up special is great too but um you kind of look like her actually oh thank you that's a compliment <laughs> yeah she's gorgeous i think she's so funny but she had that show alone together loved it yeah loved alone that was together. a great premise that was like guy and girl stuck always together not dating but like why yeah. not <laughs> yeah and best friend and they were stand-ups mm-hmm so that show, but it wasn't like about them being stand-ups. That show was so great. I hated that it was only two seasons. But yeah, um, Whitney was friends with Little Esther. And I was like, oh yeah, I know her from Alone Together. And it just shows you like people really want to pull each other up or watching Dave Chappelle with his camp in Ohio. And mm-hmm. it's just pretty great. Yeah, it's all a network. So I think you're right. I'm going to get back out there. You should. You're going to get into radio. We're going to rise to the top, Rocky. <laughs> I, I would love that. And then we can, like 20 years from now, we can be like, remember when we were talking on the podcast? That remember so when fun. we had that Zoom and then everything changed? <laughs> and then our lives changed forever, but it really could happen. It could. <laughs> you see it all the time, especially in LA. Like, just because I did move cross country, I'm like, so much shit has happened to me in the past three years just because yeah. like I've been consciously saying like I'm going to take the steps to like book this show to do this mic yeah. and you see things happen for yourself you just have to go out and do them yeah you have to put yourself like in alignment with it you're mm-hmm. like oh it is a lot of I don't know if you're a big manifester mm-hmm. um I support I- it I listen to Ariana Grande sing about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a real it is a real thing like I I go um hot and cold with manifesting when I really sit down and like put the pedal to the metal and I'm like, I'm going to focus on this, but it is true. You can manifest all you want, but if you're not doing the work that's matching the things you want, it's not just going to like Mr. Hollywood's not knocking on the door. Like, Hey, you're going to be a star kid. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It it ain't happening. You're just going to (laughs) age for sure. Like Mr. Hollywood's going to be like, go back to Kansas. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) It ain't happening. Topeka (laughs) is calling. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Very true. Couldn't have said it better. Um, so, it's toward the end of the episode. Would you yeah. like, do you have something you want to vent about and, or we could spin the roulette wheel and I could give you a topic to tell me something about. Honestly, I'm in a great mood. I don't really have <laughs> anything to vent about. It's very hot in the room I'm in, but that's mm-hmm. like the least of my troubles. Um, Let's spin that wheel. That'll okay. be fun. Let's do it. By the way, how is the subway? Is it clean? Like I'm coming to New York soon. What should I prepare for? <laughs> Do you want me to be honest with you? I find be honest. It, I find it very scary. It's gotten really scary. Just like sketchy or dirty? Uh, no, dirty is not, it's pretty clean because they shut them down. I think they just went to full service and they shut them down, I think like from two to five before that in the morning to clean them out. So it, um, I have run into like some sketchy characters. My brother saw someone get their face sliced open. His girlfriend oh saw somebody with a meat cleaver. You know, I, you know, uh, now, which, which train line? Um, I think different, like one was on the N line, one was on the L line. Like, oh, wow. And that's just the vibe is like scary. I'm actually going to a friend's tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. And I told myself like, I'm going to, and she's off the G train. So I got to take a few trains to get back to where I'm at. But I told myself, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to leave like 20 minutes before sunset even though I might want to ride out the night there, like, because I don't want to pay for an Uber and I don't really want to go to walk to the subway when it's dark. And maybe I'm being dramatic, but I mean, I've been taking the subway for 10 years, never felt scared, would take it at any time. And yeah, the post-pandemic subway is, uh, 
I think it's going to get better when the Broadway it. shows come back, though. I think I think the city's going to clean up for company. Yeah, I think so too. You know what I mean? Because I know in in Los Angeles, where I where I am in Long Beach, like you see sketchy shit going down mm-hmm. at, at nighttime, and so like, yeah, why not? I I could avoid the subway at night. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. I actually the one time I went to LA, I took the subway, and I'd never been more scared in my life. It's different. <laughs> yeah, it's very different. <laughs> yeah, they're very much like a nine to five subway here. They're like, after work, we don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew. So different. Um, let me spin the wheel. Okay, this is so exciting. Okay. It says obsessed. What are you obsessed with, Rocky? Okay, what am I obsessed with? Let's think. Um I honestly have been lately really obsessed with the TV show Big Brother. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. I'm really obsessed with that. One of my best friends has been telling me for a couple of years now to watch it. And I like was hesitant um, and she was a fan from the beginning. And then I started at season 16. She's like, start at 16, you'll be hooked. And so I've, <laughs> boun- I've bounced around, but I love it. I just like, it gets so crazy manipulative by the end. I bet. And they are like backstabbing each other and just the some of them are ruthless with their lies it's crazy so i um i only thing i don't like about it is that it definitely could be like 10 episodes less they could trim a lot of fat on that show but yeah i'm obsessed with big brother it's good to know (laughs) i like never worked on the show but i know people who pa'd on it and it's like round the clock drama (laughs) yeah I can't imagine it wouldn't be because and I just found out recently they're not allowed to have a pen they're not allowed to have paper oh um do I and I've noticed I'm watching one of the all-star seasons but I know that after (laughs) somebody put like a knife to somebody's neck in one of the earlier seasons so they stopped having alcohol but I've noticed that in the all-star season they have been drinking alcohol okay so it's like one of those social experiment reality shows yeah yeah and I'm who's actually, who's the I'll, host of the season you're watching is it julie chen always julie chen always julie chen okay <laughs> always julie chen and sometimes she comes real heavy with her cross game there was one episode she was wearing like three crosses i was like girl you are getting into heaven don't you worry <laughs> that's <Okay>. funny <laughs> is she is a big personality i working at cbs like you see these talk show hosts and you're like okay like they have a a thing they're going for and you can't convince them otherwise wow see i would i'm surprised that you said she's a big personality because i would feel like she would just be like quiet and to herself and like very poised Mm -hmm. i think she's a power player for sure wow yeah i mean she's been hosting big brother i think it's 22 seasons she's hosted every season right and the Mm -hmm. celebrity seasons i think she's finally on her last season like she she gave some out date where she's like i'm gonna be done after this season wow that Mm -hmm. means there's going to be an opening for a host of big brother yes (laughs) i'll put in my application (laughs) okay that's good to know (laughs) yeah she she was drama on the cbs lot but it was like mostly her husband so i guess she got dragged into it yeah because she after that his scandal then she's always like i'm julie chen moonvez yeah she gets the moonvez stand with the moonvez yeah yeah yeah. it's like good for you woman like do your thing Where your crosses. (laughs) So true. Well, Rocky, we come to the end. Tell us where to find you, how to find your podcast, all that good stuff. Sure thing. So um, I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Wild Nights with Rocky. On Twitter at Wild Nights Pod. You can email me at Wild Not at Wild Nights with Rocky at Gmail. Um, My regular Instagram handle is Rocky with two eyes. R O C K I I X Balboa. So you can follow me on there. And um, I put out episodes of my podcast every Monday. And they're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Simplecast. And the um, live version goes on YouTube a few few days later. Very nice. And yeah. you have a great podcast voice. So keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> so do you. So do you. And Thank you. I can't wait to watch your stand up. Oh, likewise. I like to <laughs> see you perform someday. Maybe we can connect. Uh, that- <laughs> Great. Well, really let me know when you're in New York because it would be great to grab a drink or hang out and just chat. So you have to let me know when you come back. And For sure. It'll be like way chiller. They're already getting so lax here. <laughs> and so it'll be way chiller. 
We'll avoid the subway together. We will have to. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rocky. Thank you so much for having me. Of course.